Walmart's Black and Unlimited platform is making it easier than ever to support Black-owned brands. When you go to walmart.com slash Black and Unlimited, you'll not only get to shop products from Black-owned brands, but also learn about founders like Janelle Stevens of Camille Rose, which specializes in products for naturally curly hair. And there are many more awesome products that you have yet to discover. It's all easy to find with Walmart's Black and Unlimited platform. Join in on celebrating Black brands today and every day at Walmart. We are Black and Unlimited. Visit walmart.com slash Black and Unlimited to discover more. That's walmart.com slash Black and Unlimited. Welcome to episode 170 of the Highly Relevant Podcast, a show about how Latinx pop culture is reshaping mainstream entertainment. Happy 2022 to all of you. My name is Jack Rico, your host, and we open the new year with my first guest, actress Justina Machado. You know her from the Emmy award-winning comedy reboot of One Day at a Time from legendary producer Norman Lear and several other TV shows and films that I'm sure you've seen. Our conversation today covered several interesting subjects, such as Latino representation in the animation industry, voice acting, why Hispanic animated films succeed, and real-life Latino content doesn't, and why she stopped using the term Hispanic to describe herself. But before I talk to Justina Machado, it's time I give you my weekly recap of the top Latinx pop culture headlines in a segment I like to call Jacked In. Let's begin with the top movie TV music news of the week. Broadway's bringing a Latino black Orpheus to its stages with direction and choreography by Colombian Sergio Trujillo, a book by Pulitzer Prize winner Dominican Nilo Cruz, and music by Brazilian icon Sergio Mendes. A female Zorro drama from Robert Rodriguez is in the works at The CW. Aubrey Plaza joins the cast of White Lotus Season 2 on HBO Max. Kate Blanchett to star in Pedro Almodovar's first English-language film. William Levy to lead the new dramatic series Monte Cristo from Pantalla. Emerald 2 will executive produce and star in The Redo, a romantic comedy. Anna Villafaña joins Vince Vaughn on Apple TV Plus's Bat Monkey series. The Super Bowl halftime will be headlined by hip-hop legends Dr. Dre, Snoop Dogg, Mary J. Blige, Eminem, and Kendrick Lamar. Critics' Choice Awards will air Sunday, March 13th on the CW Network and TBS, and the Oscars will have a new host this year. And in tech and social media news, Microsoft has bought Activision. WhatsApp may soon let you transfer your chats from Android to iOS. Instagram's testing a feature that lets creators charge subscription fees, TikTok to integrate stories with its main For You video feed. Twitter users can now add verified NFTs as profile photos. Spotify, still number one in music service, but its market share is declining. Netflix's stock plunged 18% because no one is subscribing to the Medibar. And Tesla's next-gen batteries will reportedly be mass-produced by Panasonic in 2023. <laughs> In our last episode, I interviewed Gloria Calderon Kellett, who is best friends with my guest today, Justina Machado. Think of this as a quasi one day at a time reunion. Justina of Puerto Rican descent is a three-dimensional actress, having worked on stage in more than 20 productions. Many television credits, including Six Feet Under, Superstore, Jane the Virgin, Queen of the South, and Grey's Anatomy, and worked in several films, including her latest animated project, The Ice Age Adventures of Buck Wild, where she voice acts Z, a brave and independent gorilla who carries with her a mission of justice and equality. Buck, who's your awesome skunk friend? I'm not a skunk, guys. I'm a Zorilla. What's the difference? The difference is I'm a mammal on a mission to bring equality and justice to the lost world. Also, skunks have slightly shorter tails. She's totally a skunk. A skunk with a secret identity. Cool. This movie, at this moment in your life, you're looking at this movie, and I know that you've said before many times, I look at the character uh, when I do almost anything. What was it about Z in particular that you felt made sense to you? I, I love the fact that she was a leader and she was uh, adventurous and courageous and vulnerable and strong and in charge and in control. And, you know, uh, she did it all with warmth and uh, humor and a lot of heart. What, what is it about this franchise in particular that makes people go back again and again and again to watch this? What is it about the story? What is it about the characters? You know how difficult it is to get anything renewed or yeah. to get a, a sequel on anything, yet this franchise just keeps on churning them out from popular demand. What is it? 
Well, I think that the messages and the theme, the themes of the movie are are just ageless, timeless, and uh, universal. You know, the theme of family, of chosen family, of respect, of finding your herd, community, justice, equality, courage. Uh, all of those themes are are people. That's what resonates with us today, tomorrow, yesterday, and um, especially the 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 part of like you know, feeling like you might be the only one. And mm. then you find somebody that 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 is different like you, but wants the same things that you do. Uh, the feeling of, of you don't need a superpower. Mm-hmm. You just need courage and, and heart. And also the very incredible, diverse, funny characters. You know, all of the diversity that they had, the voices, the characters, the it, it's just fun to listen to them. It's fun to hear Simon Pegg. He's He's hilarious. <laughs> it's fun to hear Crash and Eddie. You know, it's 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 very funny. So take me through the preparation of voice acting. You know, you talk to a lot of. I mean, I remember I, one day I asked Javier about them. It's like you're you're this probably one of the best actors of our generation. I've never seen you do theater. When are you doing theater? He's like, oh no 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 no. I'm afraid of the theater. I'm afraid of the theater. Those are real okay. actors. He said, right? Uh-huh. Voice acting seems easy but f- from everybody that i've heard voice acting is, is to some it's even much harder i i don't think it's harder but i don't but it's not easy you know it's like you don't just get into a booth and and just start talking you know because you have to like sometimes <laughs> like over exaggerate you know like i remember ah. i was doing a show once you know where you just have to put more into it when you would be doing live action you know they might be like okay dial it back that's a little bit too much. <laughs> but since you're only using your voice you have to portray all of that through your voice now i'm not uh i know some incredibly talented voice actors that can do so many different voices this is the only voice you're going to get from me so i don't have a i don't feel pressure because i'm like if you like this voice that's what's going to happen nothing else so, <laughs> so take me through your preparation talk. so there take was me really th- no preparation no i just preparation I was, no but i mean i had been familiar with the movies okay. you know so you know that and like i said because i understand that when they come to me and they ask me it's because they hear something in my voice that they want to bring to their project mm-hmm. you know i was familiar with simon pegg's uh interpretation of buck and i thought that was really fun and great and so when I went into the booth to do this with the uh, producers and the director, with John and Lori and all the wonderful, other, all the other people, uh, they just guided me. They've been a part of this franchise for years and years. So really it was them knowing what would work, what didn't work, you know, um, and it was pretty effortless because they were, it was a well-oiled machine. So mm-hmm. I, they had all the preparation, <laughs> you know, they had the history. I just came in. What is it about anima- the animated genre along with the superhero genre that just seems like all of these movies make money and the indie films that are suffered and crafted through pain and struggle <laughs> just to get it through, they don't really add to the revenue to the pockets of these creators the way these animated movies is. So you've been in this business. What is it about animation that just seems like it's always going to work? Well, I mean, it's fantasy, you know, it's like anything can happen in an animated film. I'm I'm a Zorilla, you know, with like <laughs> shapely thighs and I'm like, you know, uh, I'm, I'm saving the world and, and with a possum, with two possums and a weasel. So it's all of this, you know, all of this fantasy, all of this magic surrealism. Um, and also, you know, animation has a lot more money behind it too. Those indie films mm. sometimes you know, it's hard when you don't have a studio attached to the film. It's hard when you don't have that machine behind you putting you out there. You know, Sundance used to be that. I don't mm-hmm. know what Sundance is now. <laughs> you know, Sundance used to actually do those kind of things. And now it's kind of like not as indie as it used to be. Right. So I think that that and the business side of it, that's the reason why. But in general, I think animation just appeals to so many people. I still love animation. I get on a plane and I will watch uh, an animated movie over and over again. And I'll look <laughs> over my shoulder and I'll be embarrassed. I'm like, oh my God, is somebody looking at me? I mean, I will watch the hell out of Shrek. <laughs> right. <laughs> I think most people would too. <laughs> I will watch Shrek a million thousand times. You know what I mean? So, and the little mermaid and Cinderella, it's just this beautiful fantasy. They're fairy tales. And, 
And at the end of the day, you know, the good people always win. You know, now that we're in the conversation about animation and, and you representing along with John Leguizamo, uh, the Hispanic community in, in these movies, then you have what just came out in the news in the New York Times that Encanto just hit number one on the billboard. Wow. And you have your friend Stephanie Beatrice just nominated for a, an Annie Award. Um, and wow. everybody's getting credit for the fin- fantastic work they did. And this is voice acting. Yeah. It just seems like it it works well in animated, but then you have West Side Story and the Heights that just don't reach the pinnacle of what Encantos did. And it's just interesting to me that Hispanics work here, like with Coco as well. Oh, I love Coco. I love right. Right. So everybody will see Hispanic stories if it's animated. Yeah. But they're a bit hesitant with the juxtaposition of real life. I don't know why that is. I have no idea why some, maybe it's because they don't have to deal with actors or or <laughs> like, n- 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 or, 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 or the specificity of an actor or the authenticity of something. I don't know. I mean, I love Coco. And um, I don't know why it didn't resonate with In the Heights or with West Side Story. Maybe it's because, you know, those, the the movie that West Side Story in the Heights are made for, people aren't going to see. They're you know they're not going to see movies. Whereas Encanto and Coco, you're taking your kids. You know what I mean? It's a family affair. Mm-hmm. It's all of that stuff. Uh, I don't know, but I think it can't hurt us. I definitely think that if it's happening there, then it's gonna it's gonna you know come on this side too. We're we're gonna feel a little bit of it here. I never even thought about that. You're the you're, this is the first time I've even I've ever thought that Encanto <laughs> and Coco did so well and it doesn't translate. Um and, and I think I can go back to maybe it's because it's it's magic realism. You know, there's just a lot of magic, you know, and it's like, it's not so real and maybe they don't want to see real right now. Mm. You know, right now I hear so many from so many people. I don't want to see that. That's too depressing. I don't want it because of what's going on in the world. They want happy stories, you know, so maybe that's the reason I absolutely loved West Side Story. I saw it twice. And I yeah. think the authenticity was incredible. Um, you know, I'm Puerto Rican. So mm-hmm. I was like, every part of that was exactly right. I never felt like, oh, this is not, they're not representing us at all. This is a stereotype. I thought that it was flawless. And so I, I so I don't know, maybe that's a story too, because it's, um, it's uh, what do you call that? When it's a timepiece, you know what I right. mean? So maybe, mm-hmm. you know, people, they, they rather go see Narcos, which is so <laughs> You know, but am I right? You You are so right. Yeah, it's not close. But then it's like, what's that? You're like, damn, that's old time. What the hell is that? You know, so I don't know. (laughs) It is really odd. Because I think that, yeah, I think that, and in the Heights, you know, I did in the Heights on Broadway. And I mm -hmm. actually think that in the Heights was our generation's West Side Story. And maybe, you know, gentrification and all of that stuff that is very important and, you know, all of these things that they talk about wars. I don't know if people, you know, necessarily want to see that and they'd rather, and it'll change, you know, mm-hmm. because I'll see everything, you know, I, I like art. It doesn't matter to me, Yeah. but, yeah. um, but maybe that's the reason why I, I, and, and also, like you said, people just love animation. Yeah. Uh, and before I let you go, Justina, I just wanted to ask you, you know, Right. Everyone seems to be talking about like the main topic of conversation with Hispanics right now is la- the label of Latinx versus Latino. <laughs> Joe Biden just recently said Latinos as opposed to Latinx, and it looks like he got the memo on it. But, you know, I'm of the point of view that Latinx, if it's supposed to mean inclusiveness and Latino doesn't, then I'm all for Latinx. Yeah. What is your perspective? How, when someone asks you that question, how do you how do you answer that? I grew up saying Latino for a long time. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? Latino, Latina. But I don't have a problem, like you said, saying anything that is all inclusive. Um, but I also don't think it's something for us to get all up in arms about either. You know, it's like, you know, get, 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 giving him a hard time because he, said, <laughs> he didn't say Latinx. There's a lot of Latinos who don't like to say that, you know? Right, right. But for me, I, I look at the show I did one day at a time. I mean, mm-hmm. it was all about representation. It was all about, you know, being yourself and respecting that and respecting 
respecting pronouns and all of that. So yes, I have no problem saying Latinx. I just have to remind myself to say it because <laughs> right, you know, right, I right. spent over 40 years, you know, saying lot. I mean, I went from Hispanic which I stopped saying a long time ago yeah. to Latino. And now it's like, okay, there's, you know, another word to say Latinx or Latine. I, I don't have a problem with any of them. It's, you know, I, I, I have no opinion on it. I just feel if it makes you feel better and it's all inclusive, then I have no problem saying it, but I don't have, I don't have a, a, a stake in any of them. You know what right, I mean? Right, na right. Latino, na Latina, na Latinx, na Latinx. <laughs> The just only me. one I don't like saying is Hispanic. I don't like I know. Hispanic. And That's I always used to think, I, I always used to think that was like the one, the most generic one. And then I understood the history behind that. And I was like, oh man, even See, that. That's it. That's the only one I don't, I mean, I was at the doctor the other day and they were like Hispanic and I was like Latina. And they're like, that's not on here. And I'm like, well, it should be. <laughs> Well, I'll leave it there. Justina, thank you so much. The Ice Age Adventures of Buck Wild premieres on Disney Plus on January 28th. Justina, thank you very much. And just before I wrap up, here are three land tracks you might want to add to your playlist this weekend. Santo, salvame, que tú me tienes perreando, que no prueba, vuélveme, que yo te digo hasta cuando. Santo. Cristina Aguilera y Osuna. Melancolía, cínego y ácido pantena. Eucalito, Mario Pugli. Lento, 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 suave. Suave, 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 lentico. Lento, suave, suave, lento. And that's it for episode 170 of the Highly Relevant Podcast. I'd like to thank Justina Machado for joining me on the show. And if you like this episode, please share with your friends and have them subscribe and leave a review. Your help is valuable in helping us reach many more listeners. If you'd like to get in touch with me, reach out to me on Twitter, Instagram, or YouTube. I'm Jack Rico. See you next week on another episode of Highly Relevant. Walmart's Black and Unlimited platform is making it easier than ever to support Black-owned brands. When you go to walmart.com slash Black and Unlimited, you'll not only get to shop products from Black-owned brands, but also learn about founders like Janelle Stevens of Camille Rose, which specializes in products for naturally curly hair. And there are many more awesome products that you have yet to discover. It's all easy to find with Walmart's Black and Unlimited platform. Join in on celebrating Black brands today and every day at Walmart. We are Black and Unlimited. Visit walmart.com slash Black and Unlimited to discover more. That's walmart.com slash Black and Unlimited.